about how you uh, you look at functions here. The chain rule will allow you to find derivatives of things like this. Okay, you can already find derivatives of things like this, or even this, uh, but not these two, because there's a particular difference. This is a this first one here is a product of two functions. This is the product of what? X squared and sine x. You can find the derivative of each of those things. You can use the product rule so you can find the derivative. This is the quotient. Okay, this is the quotient of x squared and sine x. These are not products, right? These involve the same two functions. They involve sine and something squared, right? They involve they involve sine of something and something squared, but they're combined in a different way. The first one is the product of those two, right? So sine of whatever times x squared. The second one is the, the quotient of that. This is on top, right? The last ones are not um, quotients or products. What are they? It's hard to tell without some of the brackets there, but what are they? What does this mean when it says sine x squared? Where, where's the squared? On the x. It's like that, right? Mathematicians are lazy, so they leave out the brackets just to confuse everybody. What it is is it's not a product like this. It's not a quotient like that. It's a composition of functions. So it's like you take this, and where do you put the other one? Inside, right? Inside. Okay, so then you put this inside there. It's something squared inside there, right? So I guess I should make more space there, right? I should make this smaller and then put it in there like that, right? Draw an X in there, right? X. This is this is sine of the square of X, right? If you wanted to write it out like that. Like you square X and then you take the sine of it. This one is x squared and sine squared. If you were doing it on your calculator, you figured each one separately and then you multiply them. This one, you have to figure out what x squared is and then do the sine of that number. So it's like start with a number, put it in, hit the x squared key, right? And then take that and you hit the sine key. So it's a, it's a chain of functions, right? It's a composition of functions. Whereas these other ones here, you'd take a number, right? do n for number, and you uh, hit the x squared key, and then separately you hit, take n and you hit the sine key, and then you multiply those together. It's not one function of another. It's not a chain of functions. Okay? This this is a chain, right? It's a composition of functions. You've, you, you looked at composition of functions before. It means starting with something, doing one function, then doing another function to that result. So... The second one is the same thing here. Mathematicians are very lazy, so for some reason they decided that if somebody wants to do sine of x and then square it, they'll write it like this. That's what that means, sine of x, the whole thing squared. So that's not combining this the other way, right? That is combining this this way. How is, how is this? Uh, it would have been easier just to rewrite it, but this is more interesting. How is this one combined? This one is combined. This little thing is not in the middle, right? Whoa. It's uh, like this, right? Oh my goodness. And you need the x inside here now, right? And this is the this is the inside function now. Okay, so you notice this function's inside of the squared one. Need it a bit bigger first. Well, because it's actually making it large, including the width of the pen strokes, right? I'm glad to see your brain is on task. Okay, you notice that one there's a function that at least one of you already referred to as the inside function. It's inside of the other one. It really is going to help for doing the working with the chain rule if you think of inside and outside functions. The inside one is the one that happens first. You start with your number x, right, and then you do the inside function, and then you do something that's after that, outside of that. So if we have to list here, what's the inside and outside function? I think I listed the same. No, I didn't list the same functions down there. So let's write it up here. 
this one was the sine of the square of x. This would be the square of the sine of x. Right? You start with x, then you take the sine of that, then you square that result. The inside function in this second case is, what's the inside function? Sine of x, right? Sine of whatever I'm just going to put there. And the outside function is, is yeah, something squared, right? So you're combining those two together by putting the sine inside. The other one here is the reverse, right? Outside and inside are reversed from what I just wrote. Inside here is inside here is something squared and the outside is is sine of something right so this one you know this one this goes inside of there first the other way this one goes inside of that one okay so look down below here and we have to look at inside and outside functions and don't mix them up with products and quotients right <laughs> yeah, glad there was a. I remember what just happened. Yes, I am. Okay, you should be able to then, for these, at the very least, at this point, list what is the inside function and what's the outside function. I think it might be easier if you don't actually put in an x and you just say something like. The inside function here, because this is this weird thing that is that, right? So the inside function is tangent of something. And this is something squared. You do that right now.